Hi there and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Corey. If you hadn't heard, we're back. We took a seven or eight month hiatus, mostly thanks to Rick. But we are now back and we have some... I know, I throw him under the bus right away. Because the beautiful part is that he doesn't have a mic. So there's nothing that can happen this way. That length is suspicious. Hiking the Himalayas. I know. Yeah, exactly. So we are back with an awesome topic. A great example of how we are expanding out beyond just the realm of Azure Mm -hmm. into a lot of different areas. And today, a particularly exciting area in GitHub. Well, thank you very much. Hi, I'm Matthew McCullough, and I lead field solutions at GitHub. And what we want to talk about is how dev and ops and SRE and developers are getting closer and closer and closer together. And they have some competing concerns, but I think there's actually a way to make those harmonious. Harmonious? Yes. It's an, ex- it's an exciting word for an exciting topic. Let's unpack it. And so I, I'd love to. And so what you're saying is that we've got all these roles, um, uh, and today they they fight a lot. And they, you're going to... You're to show how we can avoid them from fighting. They do. Uh, and let's talk about a couple reasons why to set the stage. Perfect. Um, ops wants consistent, they want controlled deployments, they want it managed. Because, of, they, of course, they're responsible for the outcome of the application. That's right. That's right. And all developers need to do is move fast and break things. I thought I saw a poster one yeah, time, right? right? So just produce a lot of code. <laughs> uh, finally, we're seeing that those two might be at odds and there's a middle ground to meet. Right. So we want controlled deployments. And I think a lot of things, even our CEO, Nat Friedman, says, ship to learn. And that's actually a better way to think mm. about software development. You're learning all the time. If you're not getting better, stop. Right. You should be improving. So what are we going to do to do that? We're going to put a little bit of automation into our workflow and our deployment. We're going to talk about Azure deployments specifically today. Okay. And we're going to zoom in to GitHub Actions as means to do that. I'm super excited. And you said, so we'll talk about GitHub Actions. We'll talk about it in the context of Azure. But it is not limited to Azure. It is a multi-cloud capability that you're going to... And did I ruin already the surprise later? The secret weapon. I'm we sorry. Have the, we have the cape down I'm below. I'm sorry. I'm out. so sorry. Okay, fine. But I'm going to shut up and let you show some now. So, so that's a little bit of the frame. It is. Should we show a little bit of what you had in mind? Here? We should, but we should add one more reason okay, why, sorry, so people sorry. know on the multi-cloud solution. Why would you want a multi-cloud solution? Because we really believe in the Azure solution. Of course. Here. We have friends that are not all in on this yet, and it's actually great to meet them where they are. I think of it's course. kind of a corporate culture here. So, if we have the ability to deploy to multiple clouds, we can bring some of those into the family. Absolutely. That's my well, motivation. Well, and, and look, I think um, uh, it's not even whether they're. It's it's a lot of customers have the plan to be multi cloud forever, and that's great, right? That's no problem. We want to be able to support them in their in their endeavors and make sure that they've got single tooling that they can use to be able to, to accomplish right. those goals. So I'm Consistent excited. Consistent in all the ways. That's right. So we're gonna first head over to a page because I want things that the audience can touch and. Feel. I love it. So GitHub.com/slash/features/slash/actions is the entry page. So you can Perfect. do more reading. We're not gonna read just slides. Or do you want to read the slides out loud? Well, I could, but I feel the like they're they're pretty good at that. Okay, so we're they can let them read do that on their own. Okay, fine. Exactly. Exactly, but this is a workflow management system, so let's set the stage. We're going to zoom into a specific part of it today, which is just around deployment, but you can think of triggers like a contributor license agreement. Corey, have you signed the agreement such that you can contribute to this project? It could be there, Mm -hmm. but it can also be for deploy. It can be for issue management. Corey, you have an issue open that's been for 21 days, or is it eight months? I remember that. It's eight months, the issue, and it's assigned to Rick right now. It is. Okay, so we can have it (laughs) alert Rick. I reassigned it. I reassigned it. Perfect. So perfect. So it can be on that, Yes. but then we're going down to the specific uh, deployment on okay. once today. Now, what I'll tell you is Microsoft is a huge contributor to this, as are AWS and as is GCP as well, but we're over in Azure slash Action, okay. so we can see the work that outside contributors can put into this action system, write these little modules, Lego bricks, So that they will. work with whatever those, whatever that environment may be. Mm-hmm. Got it. Issues or deployments. So here's the page where you can view some of that source. Pretty cool. It's open source. You can dive into it, but we're here to look at how it actually works. Love it. Now, for the deployment ones, um, we can get a specific detection. If it's a type of a JavaScript application you'd like, you might at least see a little recommendation that said, would you like to use this? Yes. But uh, you can also dive in and specifically pick them. If we had Labeler, for example, we can dive into that particular action and just apply that to our particular project. Now, I've got one set and ready to go over here. We're going to slide over to the Azure Bookstore application. Okay. Uh, shout out to uh, Vitor and Alon for helping me set this up over the last okay. couple of days. And this is deployed out to Azure websites or will be very Shortly after we discuss this. Okay, so right now it's it's we're still we, we got to we're not ready yet. On the edge. Ops is 
said, hold on for a minute. On the edge. Okay, exactly. Great. Okay. And I want to talk you through the syntax before we do that because it's kind of uh, the reverse of a magic trick. I want to show you how the trick is done, and then I'll show you the magic trick at the oh. end. So, opposite of usual. Okay. We're going to go into a .github folder okay. over here, and there's a couple of file formats, and there's an extension you're going to love, .yml. Mm -hmm. YAML. YAML. Uh, familiar to so many in the Azure ecosystem, anybody using pipelines or the like would, would know that as yep. well. Yep. We're going to drop into the deploy YAML to take a quick look over here, and this is part of our configuration. Super easy to read. Name, yep. We've got the groups, yeah, we've got the name yeah. for the Key deployment, pairs, different environments. Yeah, okay, perfect. But there's no answer yet. We're just looking at text of how those environments interact with the code that I'm changing, and that's mm. going to be part of the reveal in a moment. So I'm going to ask you to kind of hold that Hold thought. questions until the end, I think, is what you're telling me. Maybe you just hold that thought. Okay, fine. The questions can okay, questions can we'll bring Okay, great. Then we're going to go over into workflows, okay. which is another piece. This is where we define these behaviors on an action system. More YAML files, build, clean up, master deploy, deploy to QA, or deploy to, to test. test. Yep. Configuration for each, we'll just drop into one just for the sake of example. Slide down to this, pretty easy to parse this. You don't need a user That's manual. A Deploy to production with all the exclamation points That's so you right. know it's Four real. Four exclamation points. And it's got Ubuntu. Uh, I hear that the overall Microsoft ecosystem is now much friendlier with Linux. So Ubuntu is, <laughs> That's right. is, is that official? That is official. Cool. That is official news. And soon we're going to have like a Windows subsystem for Unix, Linux? Yeah, we don't, like we don't talk about that. Okay. So, <laughs> I thought it was, thought it was, it was released. Yeah, yeah, no, it is actually. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. for not for, yeah, it's for, yeah, okay, great. Go it's on. In there. So we've got that. That's where we're deploying. So we're going to slide over here, and uh, this is basically our, our build system. So should we just make this happen? Yes, we should. We're going to go to the top level of the project, Azure Bookstore, and we are going to immortalize you by dropping it over into the source file, and then over into main, and then over into the web app, web app. Got it. and then over into books.html. It's going to be a lazy change. All of your audience is going to go, Matthew does not know how to code. He's breaking the HTML. What is he doing? Doing, but I'm sliding down right over here to, uh, let's put it over here in the title, and we'll just say, Tuesdays with Corey, you're going to be so famous. I know. For, this, is, For, this is on the internet. <laughs> and these, so. commits, these commits don't get removed, <laughs> That's so this is serious this, stuff. I mean. Tuesdays with Corey. Uh, and number two, because this is take number two, if you will. Okay. Um, it's always better. Second yes, version. The second version. We're going to propose the file change on a branch. Okay. And I'm going to slide over here to labels, and I'm going to pick a deploy, deploy to test, test okay. in this particular case. Okay. And now, what's happening here when I create this pull request is a couple of things. By this label, just a ticketing system, if you will, to this change, this pull request, we are sending signals that can be captured by those Lego bricks, as yes. we call them, yes. to the workflow. And you'll see that I added that, uh, deploy to test, and the robot. I love when robots do my work. I love bots. You, you too? I do. We yes. share that love. Well, I love, the, I love the little hands, too. I think that they... They're, they're, they're perfect. They're perfect for typing. And so what you've got in this particular case is uh, commit status uh -oh. checks failed for Tuesday with Corey, too. And so what I wanted to show with this particular piece is that the bot is interacting not just with the code that we change, yes. but in fact, the labels as well. Based on the label, it's doing different things, is what you're saying. That's right. Yeah, Got it. So what's what's the value of this? Let's talk about the value prop for just a second. We've made this human approachable to do devs and ops things again, which was our first premise. Right, right. Oh, which environment do I want to go to? I need to change the parameter and hold my hands the certain way right, and make right, sure right. I change the config. No, just apply the right label. Just put the right label and the right behavior happens. And it's grouped. Exactly. That's cool. Super easy to approach. So this will maybe do like a more significant level of testing or more so. Okay, got it. Perfect. And we can even simultaneously deploy them, but uh, I already warmed this up over at the top so I can show I did a master right before before we started this build so we can mm. save our time. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, in fact, that if I click my way over to this, we have the master branch still nice and stable. There you and go. this is the beautiful contrast. Right. I blew so up still going. test, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've still got prod in a beautiful state, but I'm working out of a single repo. None of this, which repo am I copying and pasting and moving it to a second one to do right. the other deployment? Right, right, right. Single source of truth. Right. You permanent single, history and record right. with right. the issues. Everybody working so you, together. You can tell that which code has gone to production and which code has gone to very very cool. Auto so you know the the, 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 the my the putting my name into it, you can quickly identify that that broke everything. It, it, 
wasn't going to say it. Which is, but I, get, I get that feedback a lot, so that's good. I'm going to leave that to you. Okay, thank you. I'm going I'm okay. to be kind and gentle. That's nice. You might then also ask, you know, do I have any visualization? Though it's nice that there's all this magic, but come on, give me a, give yeah. me a lens. Give, give me a view, view a of a beautiful of Azure happening. dashboard totally. into this. Uh, I was here's a beautiful GitHub dashboard. We think alike. Uh, so when we're looking through this, we can see all the workflows. We can see the same named ones that yes. we went through in the individual yep. files. Yep. We can see the deploy to QA or a review app or the deploy to production. And uh, the prod one came a little bit earlier, triggered that one six, six days, days ago, ago to get that Fine. nice and, yep. and the cleanup stage. We can look at some of these. And if we want to go into a build a feature branch, let's dive in and even look specifically That's why this yeah. thing blew up. We can dive into any one of these and we can view the workflow file, view the pull request, yep. cancel the cancel run it if, if, it's, if it's still running at that point. And on any of these, we can also look at the time that it was built, who was the person that did the build. And last but not least, I want to take you over to one more piece on this, which is the ability to go way back in history. So we can scroll back over here, we can go to previous times, and we can filter this by particular users too. So in this case, I can just narrow it down to the ones that are Matthew. So what does this give you? An audit log. This is back to Dev and Ops yeah, of course. meeting together. You can see who give me some logs. Who of give things. me some history. Exactly. Let me query what's happened in the past and find the intersection of those two things. So that's really what I intended to show you at the top level. What else um, What else have you got from me, I mean, Corey? that's awesome. So, um, I mean, I basically, uh, just to, oh, so one question. Okay. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that, so moving fast, and especially from an ops perspective, sometimes securing and making sure you've got your credentials in a good place uh, is a challenge and sometimes a place that people get tripped up. So I'm wondering. You can almost read my mind. I, well, so what we do is we go to the logs. because the, the, mine, the, the password is printed in the logs. That, that's the perfect place. Bad. That way you can reuse it. Got it. Oh, wait. That's the opposite. That's We're not, not supposed we to do that. That's not what we want. So I'm going to show you over here that it is sanitized. When we expand out any of these um, uh, stages, this is the build log itself, uh, you'll notice that if there is a place that I took a environment variable, important word, environment mm -hmm. variable, and pasted it in here, you would not see the password exposed because it is a special type of environment variable called a secret that can be used in the build. You, some folks will now scrub back in the video. They'll see the little parameterized uh, environment variable for password in there. Yes. And that is set under settings. I'm going to slide my way down over to secrets, and you can see that we supply you with a very there simple key value secret store. And the beauty of this is that you have users, let's say you're a super user, you're, right? you're the biggest boss over here, you'll be able to set these, you're paying the bill for the Azure consumption. You don't need to let the rest of the team actually see the value, they can just use, they can just use it as an environment. And right? then you can manage sort of rollover and all that stuff happening in the background as needed. The people who are developing against it don't need to know or care. Again, splitting the needs of ops and the needs of developers into sort of these two roles, but again, having a single source of truth. And you have uh, permissions such that you can divide those responsibilities, right, and yet they're playing in the same space. Got it, got so it. So it's almost as if their badge gives them the proper permissions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so cool. that's it. Front to back, what do we see? We saw that Dev and Ops can meet in the same repo. Yes. Uh, they can deploy to different environments and keep production stable. Single happy, truth, happy. But still a single source of truth. Absolutely. Mm. Move fast so they can be doing that testing QA, and then it gives ops a lens into what's coming because it's in that same place. While also giving an audit log going back in time. Absolutely. Per, by person, filterable, queryable. This is, you, I mean, this is, this this is, is good. good. I mean, this is good. You, this is going to be successful this is for you. Be good. You're going to have a, a demo <laughs> out here pretty soon. Um, and then you can see all those history. We can see the one deploy that you've done in the 92 that I've done in the, in the past history over Thank here. You. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a competition. That's right. But, okay. The issue that was open for it's eight months versus the one yeah, that mine right. was open okay. for just a few minutes. Okay, fine. And then lastly, down fine. to the security uh, credentials over here, we can store these as key value pairs. And again, with uh, access control based on that. And right. everything you just showed works no matter what cloud you're deploying to. That is one more reveal that we can take right over here. Ooh. Yes, it is. We're going to find our way over to Actions. Okay. And I'm going to click over into the Deployment category. Sure. And so if you look at the URL over here, github.com slash marketplace, we're thinking of this. Even though you don't pay individually for these actions, yes. we're thinking this as a shopping for the behaviors yes. that you need in the system. Yes, yes. And we do support all of the clouds out there, whether it's uh, Heroku, AWS, GCP, of course, strong support for Azure. And the beauty of this, again, is you can actually do a matrix build and a multi-cloud deploy. deploy so it is not a binary choice. Right. It is a maybe all of them. And then again, it choice. comes back to that single source of truth in your code, but deployment options that can go anywhere. You can even say test goes one place, production goes another place, and no problem. Exactly. And if you're trying
trying to test your path and move over to Azure, you can imagine that you could have production be a different cloud totally. and already getting yourself in that habit That's right. for prod and QA. Well, what? So that's it. Matthew, what a cool set of things that you just showed. I think we're going to, there's a lot of other things I feel like we probably have not yet dug into that we're going to need to have you come back and show, talk about Hours, more. and I would love to. Hours, hours. Hours. We will, the next Tuesdays with Corey will be a three hour long show. Yeah, it's called the Marathon, go, Marathon Edition. The GitHub Marathon yeah, Edition. Yeah, exactly. I like this. Uh, it's a we're pleasure. Really do that. Thank, thank you. you for the time. Yeah. You awesome bet. show, awesome set of stuff, and thank you for joining us. It's been a really fun to come back and have an awesome set of demos. If you have any questions for me or for Matthew or about the show, hit us up at a new tag phrase here. Uh, tag phrase, is that what we say for Twitter? A new tweet tweet thing. That's what the kids say. I think we say tweet thing, a little tweet thing. Hashtag TWC solutions, because we're talking about all solutions now at Microsoft. Uh, and ask us questions, comments, give us feedback, or new topics. Or hashtag GitHub or hashtag Octocat, our mascot. There you go. And those are those are tweet things, too. So just FYI. Thank you so much for your time, Matthew. Thank you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. You want to you do it? Let's do it. You, no, you got to do only one person, so you got it. Because <laughs> it creates a whole bunch of confusion if we both clap. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do an intro such that this could also be just the first show, just based on yeah. the quality. In case we need a redo. In case we find that this is a higher quality show than the other one. Setting the bar. the bar. Setting the bar. Wow, I need a moment. Take a, just okay. breathe in. It'll be okay. But you've got a lot to live up to. All right, you ready?